we're going to talk about one enormous problem with electric vehicles that no one's talking about. I really don't understand why no one's talking about this or they haven't figured it out or whatever. Maybe it's been silenced for good reason. So what we're going to be talking about today is electromagnetic radiation and how this is going to impact your health. Let's talk about electric vehicles. I actually quite like the idea of having an electric vehicle as your daily commuter car. You can charge them from home. If you have a solar system at, at your house, you can actually charge them at very little to zero cost and you are energy independent. So if anything goes wrong, if there's a fuel shortage or whatever, you'll always be able to get around, which I really like the idea of. However, there's also very little to zero ongoing maintenance costs apart from tires or yes i understand they aren't perfect but overall as an idea for a a to b car or a daily commuter car i think they make a lot of sense so i just wanted to preface that with they have a place in the market and i'm not against them so with that being said with more and more new electric vehicle companies coming to australia the us the uk all of the all of the main countries that are slow on the uptake we're seeing an influx of affordable electric vehicles often from China. Now this is really good in some cases because it lowers the, the actual barrier to entry to purchase an electric vehicle is becoming more and more affordable for the everyday person. That being said, they are still not cheap, okay? But what I'm really concerned about is some of the health problems that no one's talking about in regards to actually being inside an electric vehicle when it's when it's being driven and that problem really is in regards to the electromagnetic radiation so now that the honeymoon phase is really over with the electric vehicles and they're becoming more and more common there have been numerous reports and studies in regards to health problems that people are now having whilst they are driving an electric vehicle these include headaches dizziness brain fog muscle aches amongst many others so why is this and what is actually causing it so you have to understand that electric vehicles, they have a battery, a very large battery, generally on the actual floor of the actual car. It's, it's to keep the center of gravity low and it's really good for packaging purposes. So that's why they put it there. So when you're driving, driving an electric vehicle, you're essentially sitting on top of a battery that is discharging an enormous amount of energy to just get around. So in order to really understand how much energy goes through an electric car's battery, the average house in the US uses around 15 to 22 kilowatt hours worth of electricity each day. I'll put the numbers up on the screen but the Tesla Model X's battery is around 90 kilowatt hours, which is enormous. So you have to think about it, that's between four to five days of one household's worth of electricity that is stored in each battery. So there's a lot of electricity that's moving around. So when electricity is discharged, it creates a magnetic field. This is the same way that an ignition coil works on a car. It creates a magnetic field that is then collapsed, which induces an enormous electrical charge. Anyway, we're talking about electric vehicles here. But the point is, is that when they are discharged, they create a magnetic field. And then you think about it, you're inside the car driving the electric car whilst there is, it, whilst there is this magnetic field that is going on around you. So what we have here are a couple of knobs measuring the EMFs in this Tesla Model S. So depending on where they have the actual sensor, the EMFs are different in regards to where the actual components are in the car. So when he puts the EMF meter, under the passenger side footwell, that's where, the, that, that's where there's a lot of computers and so that's why it gives a much higher reading there. Also the reading that it gives there is about 142, 143, which is actually a pretty outrageous reading. Like that's actually, that's actually disgraceful. That's well above the acceptable limit. So what are some other appliances that use this? Creating a magnetic field is essentially a form of radiation. So you are essentially getting cooked when you are driving an electric vehicle. They're actually attacking the cells inside your body. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't really want that. And another reason why this is so important is because us humans, we are electronic beings. Our brain runs on electricity. This might sound really silly, but it's true. And then you induce a magnetic field into an electrical device. Now. It's a very small amount of electricity, but you get the point. It's not good for your cells. It's not good for your body. It's not good for your brain. It's not good for, it's not good for anything. And then you have to think about charging. Wherever you charge your electric vehicle at home, the area around is also affected. So what I'm saying is, is that if you live on top of your garage, I'm not sure what your house looks like personally, but if you're, if you're sleeping on top of a garage whilst your electric car is in there, 
charging, it is essentially affecting you there as well. So it's wherever the vehicle is being charged and discharged. It only really gets discharged when it's driving. When it's sitting stationary and, and the vehicle is asleep, it's discharging an incredibly small amount. And that's mostly just due to batteries lose charge over time. It's just, it's just how they are. I could go into more detail, but they just do. Some of the more serious health problems that are being caused by people driving these electric cars involve cardiovascular disease, problems with their liver and kidneys, you're more likely to get cancer, unfortunately, which is an enormous problem. It disrupts your hormones, so it essentially has the same effect as an endocrine receptor, which is in aftershave, a lot of deodorants, PFAS that's in your water, the non-stick pans, anyway. I'm not crazy, but it affects your hormones, which is a big deal. It affects your testosterone and the estrogen that's in your body. And that in itself can cause a whole bundle of other problems, as well as autoimmune problems. So. Problems with cardiovascular disease, heart disease, kidneys, liver, hormone disruptors, and all of these combined also have an effect on your, on your immune system. It also affects your red and white blood cell counts because your body thinks it's being attacked. The long and short of it is there are lots of problems with being in a location where there's electromagnetic radiation, no matter what it is. If it's in your car, your house, your phone, that's also, really, that's also a really good point. Is the problem with electromagnetic radiation just in cars? No, you also get it from your phone, which I'm filming on right now. This microphone that I'm using, if you have a smartwatch, which I refuse to wear because I feel like if you want to watch, you should get a watch to tell the time or use your phone. I feel as though if you want to go and buy a Rolex, you either need to have an enormous amount of money and it doesn't matter and you actually appreciate the design and the engineering for what it is, or you're buying the Rolex to impress people you don't like to give the illusion that you're more wealthy than what you actually are to help fulfill your you know insecurity anyway the same goes for cars as well it goes for any silly purchase that's why everything i own serves a purpose and i either enjoy it or i have a reason to own it anyway we're getting sidetracked again mercedes-benz recently announced that they're spending a lot more money on the effects of electromagnetic radiation and how to actually insulate people inside the car there's only so many things that they can do they can add blanking plates and other layers of insulation on the actual floor pan but you also get it from the actual screen that are in cars so all modern cars even non-electric cars with the digital dashes and the digital head unit that gives off electromagnetic radiation same with your tv same with your laptop you get the idea it's everywhere smartphones are actually classified as a class 2 carcinogen due to their electromagnetic radiation exposure and that ideally it should be further than two inches away from your body at all times so if it's in your pocket that's practically on your body so the reality is is that we can't escape being away from electromagnetic radiation it's in wi-fi towers wi-fi routers phone towers it's 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 absolutely everywhere but i just wanted to start the conversation and so people are more aware on how this is actually going to affect yourself and other people that are in your electric vehicle. So all we can really do is try and reduce our exposure to it. So this is more than just owning an electric vehicle. This in itself is enough of a problem where I will probably never own one as long as this is still a problem. Maybe in 10, 15 years, there'll be another breakthrough where they're using a different type of battery that reduces electrical interference and noise the electromagnetic radiation field that you'll succumb to is either less or it's not that big of an issue. Not having your phone on you, having a Wi-Fi router that's on the other side of the house where you don't spend that much time, at least where you don't sleep. There's lots of things that we can do, but it's never gonna be perfect. This was a little bit of a different video, but I recently came across a whole bunch of information in this topic and I feel as though it's really important, especially as no one's really talking about this. I could also go on and talk about the nanoparticle come off the electric vehicle specific tyres and how they're a thousand times more harmful than tailpipe emissions, but you get the idea. 